the season premiere of The Beat. All spring long, this show is with you to cover the Aggies, every sport that is in play, and we will do it right here from 12th Man Studios. We're glad you've joined us. I'm Will Johnson, and there is no better place to start than with our men's basketball team. And to get us going, we have their head coach, Billy Kennedy, in studio with us. Coach, thanks so much for taking yeah. the time. It's good to be here. It's basketball season in, in the middle of it, so. As we've watched you and as now as you start to head to the back half of mm -hmm. it all, one thing that you look at is this is a young team. What challenges does that present to you as a coaching staff when so much youth is a part of the loss? Well, when you have to focus on effort and practice and guys competing every every possession, teaching them how to play hard, people don't understand that's a talent in itself. The intangibles that we were so good at last year mm -hmm. is what we lacked this year. I mean, every, four games that we've played, we've, we've led in the second half and we haven't been able to sustain it. And, uh, because we're not disciplined enough, and that's something we got to get better at. And with that said, is this kind of the time of the year where you want to see that growth as you change from first half to second half of the season? Yeah, and we've seen it recently in the last couple of weeks. You know, the last two games, we've only turned the ball over 12 and 11 times. So the first three or four conference games, we would turn it over 20, 25, 22. You know, and, and uh, you can't win basketball games at this level like that. One of those young guys is a freshman, and it's Robert Williams. And I think a lot of folks who have come to Reed Arena and checked you guys out have enjoyed watching him. Do you kind of marvel that this guy is just a freshman the way he plays? Uh, I marvel at his talent every day. I mean, he is long, the wingspan, the, his uh, grasp of what we're doing has been, been better than I would have thought. But he's running, he runs and jumps and is as skilled as any player I've ever coached, you know, as a freshman. And his impact as a freshman has been really good for us. But I see the freshman mistakes that he makes, you know, cheap fouls, slapping down on the ball, playing behind in the post, his turnovers, not finishing. He should never have his shot blocked. Mm -hmm. um, and, but he, the best thing about it, all those things I just listed, he knows it mm -hmm. and he wants to work on it and we're working to get him better real fast. And he's kind of down there with Tyler Davis. Tyler's a sophomore, still young, but he's been through some battles in the SEC and in the NCAA tournament mm -hmm. last year. Do you feel like Tyler gets a little extra attention from opponents at times? Well, and, and, is, and, and is it about finding ways to battle through that on certain nights? Yeah, now Tyler's getting double, triple team, played different ways in the post, and he has struggled the first few games. Last year, he had so much help around him that most situations he was one-on-one -on -one or he had an angle for an easy basket. Our team's not getting any easy baskets right now because of our, our lack of guard play, being able to make plays for each other or off of our defense. So, um, you know, it's been an adjustment for all these these guys. There's a lot of weight on their shoulders that was, wasn't on it last year. We're looking forward to finishing strong at the end. Uh, we, we're, we're getting better. Mm -hmm. No question. And we'll, we'll keep following you throughout the spring and the season. Again, thanks so much for the time here today. Yeah. Billy Kennedy, our head men's basketball coach at Texas A&M. His team on the road for a while and back home next week. The Beat, brought to you by ASCO, your place for case construction equipment in Texas. Welcome back to the beat. Curtis Knox, point guard for the Texas A&M women's basketball team, is one of the best in the country at distributing the basketball. She has dished out dimes frequently, and it's led Texas A&M to the cusp of another trip to the NCAA tournament. But when her life changed off the court, she realized that everyone, including herself, can use a helping hand now and then. We rise by lifting others. On the court at Reed Arena, senior Curtis Knox has lifted her team by holding the number one spot in assists nationally for the majority of the season. Conversely, Knox received assistance from her team off the court and in her personal life when she revealed she was pregnant. Big thing was that I was letting my teammates down, but you know, it was very it was a very frustrating time. When I finally did tell my teammates, they were so, so, so supportive. It just they were on my side. I was just so happy for her. She's a tough, 
tough lady, so I mean, I wasn't expecting anything less of her basketball career. 6 a.m. workouts, I was there every morning uh, with the team, but I did not work out. Um, I was just there supporting. September, I had Haven, and uh, I was back on the court a month later. The humble Texas native was moved by the love and support her team delivered once Haven entered the world. I think I cried the first time I saw her. She's so cute. She's just a bundle of joy. Like she's just, every time she's around, it just lifts my mood. I'll see her. I saw her after a loss, and I instantly felt better. She just makes my heart happy. <laughs> Still all business on the floor, Knox and her teammates learned life outside the gym could quickly change. I was in practice one day, I had an individual, and I look over and I have like five of my teammates just like surrounding Haven trying to change a diaper, so <laughs> they learned that day. Now the point guard has an extended family that reaches beyond her parents and Haven. The new mother can lean on her teammates. I am blessed to be around so many people that uh, were willing to help me out. They never judged. Um, they were always, always, always um, by my side. She really means a lot to me, and I'm so glad she's getting what she deserves all the time she was here. Um, she's you know, leading the nation in assists. She's just, she's just like the best point guard ever. Like. <laughs> Uh, she's just being, she's a great mother, like she gives Haven everything and anything she needs and always goes above and beyond and she goes above and beyond for us. She didn't have to come back this year um, and I'm really glad she did. Knox earned her bachelor's degree in 2016 and is currently pursuing a master's while donning the maroon and white. Curtis has just accepted being a student athlete, being a mother, and now adulthood. There's so many things that she can do. Opportunity has presented itself and she's grabbed it. And now I've had no idea she could be this good on the basketball court. Knox has risen to one of the SEC's premier players, being lifted by her teammates and the Texas A&M community. Curtis, as a parent, hopes to help Haven ascend and has the same dreams every mother as for their child. I just I just want her to be, you know, grow up to be a strong, strong person, to be able to, to handle adversity like I did, just to never give up. That's one thing that I thought about when I had her, like, am I gonna be able to do this? I had to be the example for her, uh, to show her that, you know, I came back, anything is possible. Curtis and the Aggies will need help on Sunday when they travel to Starkville to take on a Mississippi State team that is ranked in the top five. When we come back, we have women's head coach Gary Blair in our studio. We welcome you back to this season premiere of The Beat. You just saw a feature on Texas A&M point guard Curtis Knox for our women's basketball team, and we are now joined by her head coach, Gary Blair. And coach, we'll get to Curtis in just a second, but first I want to know if you caught your breath from last Sunday. Went down to the last few seconds against the LSU Tigers and getting a win. <laughs> I think between Billy Kennedy and I, we've checked into the hospital after our games, and we've recovered. <laughs> And we're rejoicing. I think uh, we were in the lead for all of 31 seconds. Thank heavens we were at home because I think our fans pulled us through along with some good play by our players. Certainly so. And one of them being uh, Curtis. Coach, uh, you think about all that she's juggling. Does it make, make it that much more impressive what she's doing on the floor for you? She's always been, ever since she got here five years ago, probably the quietest kid and the most low maintenance kid on our team. And then all of a sudden things change in her life. Uh, she becomes a mother and a very good mama. I'm proud of her just on how she's juggling her life. She graduated in August. She's working on her master's. She's doing, and instead of just saying, I played the backup point guard position for A&M, pro scouts are now looking at her and saying, hey, this kid might be the answer for us. But right now, she's the answer for me. Mm -hmm. 
Curtis and your team. Uh, 20 games in after the LSU win. You don't play during the midweek, but you got a big one on Sunday at Mississippi State. 15 and 5, 5 and 2 in the SEC. What's the state of your team right now as the all important closing stretch is coming up? We have a lot of confidence in ourselves. We have the chemistry on this basketball team because we know one night it might be Hillsman, one night it might be Danny, one night it might be Curtis giving 16 assists, it might be Anriel with 15 rebounds, it might be Cooper hitting two big threes or Jazz making a defensive play or a drive to the basket. We do not know, we cannot write the script before the game, but we know we're working hard and I love my team and it's uh, a team that really likes each other and that's what you really have to have when you do not have the, the depth that some of the teams have in our league. When February rolls around we all kind of become bracketologists and I think you do a little bit too looking mm -hmm. at postseason potential. Uh, do you like where your team sits as far as RPI and what your chances are as far as seeding as you, obviously you have another great shot at another trip to the NCAA tournament. Well, our RPI is good because we just beat an LSU team whose RPI is higher than ours. Mm -hmm. And so that's going to help all the way. And uh, the thing is, before the season started, I was saying, how can we get to eight? You get to eight and eight, eight out of 10 times, you're going to be in the NCAA tournament if you have a good non-conference schedule, which we do, and you'll be in. But now eight and eight, that's a little bit lower. Get to nine and seven, take it out of the hands of the committee. Now get to 10 and six, looking for a top four seat. Mm -hmm. Get to 11 and five, we're playing at home. Schedule's gonna get a lot harder, but we're getting a lot smarter and hopefully we're gonna continue to have kids step up, stay injury free. There you go, we'll be following you every step of the way. Thanks for the time, good luck in Starkville and the rest of the way. Thank you. Gary Blair right here on the beat. When we come back, we spotlight Aggie track and field middle distance runner, Jasmine Pro. The Beat, brought to you by Memorial Hermann, official sports medicine partner of Texas A&M Athletics. Welcome back to 12th Man Studios. Texas A&M track and field recruits nationally and globally. When you've had the kind of success Pat Henry has experienced at this school, it allows you to do that. And the Aggies are glad they hit up the mid-Atlantic states to find Jasmine Frey. And you'll see that the middle distance runner from Long Island is not short on talent. I love Long Island. Um, I grew up there all my life. Um, I went to private Catholic school. Um, my family's from Jamaica, so they really believe in uniforms and the Catholic education and, you know, learning your religion in school and stuff like that. In her youth, Jasmine tried it all, but track and field became the one. We switched sports by season. So we did soccer, basketball, and lacrosse, and I didn't really like any of them. Um, like, I did them because they were fun and stuff, but I don't think, like, I was particularly good at any of them either. Um, and I always noticed that with lacrosse, I was always just good at the running part, but not like getting the ball. And then basketball, I was good at like the running part again, but not maybe dribbling it. Or then for soccer, I wasn't good at like the hand-eye coordination, but I could run with the ball. So my mom said, you know, let's just put you in track. Um, I started doing track and it was kind of like fun. It was like, you know, the CYO type track and everything like that. And then I said to my mom, I was like, you know, I want to take it like, you know, to the next level. I want to take it more seriously. And that's when I entered the Colgate women's collegiate, Colgate women's games. And the end result was whoever made it to finals got to run at Madison Square Garden. And that was like, you know, it was like a very elite thing. And so I did that my first, probably like my first serious year, I guess you could say. So that was in about seventh grade, eighth grade. And I didn't do well. And so I came back from that the next year in eighth grade and I was able to make it to Madison Square Garden. And I think that's where it all started. By high school, it was clear she was good enough to run at the next level. But could she run with the elite at Texas A&M? I was very nervous. I remember the first day that I started getting calls um, on July 1st. I was with my friends at the beach, actually, and my mom called me and she kind of wanted me to come back home because she wanted me to call the colleges back. And it was intimidating because they were big schools that were calling me. And I said to myself, you know, I don't know if I can go there. 
And then I got the call from Texas A&M in like late August going into September. And my mom called me and she's like, you know, Jasmine, Texas A&M just called you. Like, I, I think we should do an official visit. And I said, no, I don't want to, I don't want to do a visit there because I, I can't run there. I was like, I'm not good enough. You see like Kamaria Brown and like Dion Lendor and Braylon Taplin and you know Shamir Little, like they're all running there. They're all breaking records. They're winning NCAAs. And I said, I can't do that, you know? And so my mom made me go for a visit. Like she forced me to, you know? And I came down here for a visit and it was my second visit, my second official visit. And I don't know, I just got off the plane. I met my coach, Coach Francique. I loved him and I just loved the school. I loved Coach Henry, Coach Anderson, Coach McRaven, all the volunteer coaches. I loved the facilities. And I, I, this was my first time to Texas too. I had never traveled by myself even. So I guess this was like a growing up point maybe. And I don't know, I think everything just fell together and I loved the school. I loved everything about it. And I didn't take a visit anywhere else. Already this indoor season, she broke the school record in the mile and has pushed the Aggie standard at other distances. But for her, the challenge is never ending. I always try to say to myself, you know, just, you know, just because you broke a record, you know, doesn't, I don't want it to mean that I'm just satisfied with it, I guess you could say. I think Coach Francique has definitely brought that out of me. I'm never really satisfied with my race. Like, even when you do break a record or when someone breaks like an NCAA collegiate record, there is still something that they could have done better. Jasmine and A&M Track are at the Razorback Invitational in Fayetteville this weekend. They run at home on February 3rd and 4th and mark down the date of March 10th. That's when the NCAA Indoor Championships come to Aggieland. Just about time to close out the season premiere edition of The Beat, but first let's tell you that the men's tennis team, nationally ranked, started their season over the weekend and beat Rice. Now they look forward to the prestigious ITA kickoff weekend. Year in and year out, it is an early season test, and the Aggies are hosting, bringing in SMU, Ole Miss, and Baylor for it. Here's head coach Steve Benton. We've got one match under our belt. We had a tough one against Rice on, on Saturday on the road. You know, get the jitters out for the first match of the year, and, and I expect our team to play much better as we, uh, as we move forward this weekend. Obviously get to play here at home, which is a big advantage for us. And, uh, you know, our guys have got to come out and basically want it more than the other, two, other three teams if we're going to go to Virginia and make the final 16. We're out of time on the beat, but we're here throughout the spring for Cumberland Aggies. We'll see you next week.